uh, are fighting for their kids. Yeah. You know, and I was like, that's, that's real. <laughs> that's, that's real. And, you know, and the, you hear the bad, the stories of like, you know, like oh, wife wants to start proceedings. So like they call a SWAT team to my house and put me on the ground, you know, like stuff like that. And, and I, it was really kind of heart wrenching stories mm-hmm. about what was happening to men out in the world and seeing how big the problem is. And yeah, of course I'm worried about, uh, I concerned for, for, you know, young men and, uh, their development and, uh, you know, it's, they're being pushed through like a bad system that teaches them the wrong things. And uh, it's not making them better. It's making them weaker, mm-hmm. you know. And so, yeah, it's it's a real problem. And that's why I'm glad to like be included in things that, you know, are educating young men in, in whatever way. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's not really where an area where I should be working in. Uh, but uh, I do think that that's important yeah. um, for them. To, it's, it's such a huge thing because, I mean, obviously they are the future of all of this uh you know and so you know and man who wants to live in a genderless alien world where they were all gray people and like you know it seems yeah. like we're like fast tracking to like what aliens look like yeah you know, you know like it's just let's just become generalist non-humans you know and then uh i i think one of the reasons why i write what i write about is because uh, what I saw was that something really noble and beautiful was being lost mm. and it was dying. And uh, that, I mean, what's if you can tell me something better than heroic masculinity, I'm all ears. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you, some dude who's made himself stronger and then takes a courageous role in some way and puts himself at risk of harm. Um, to do something that he think is right, thinks is right. Um, I don't know of anything better or more beautiful than that. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I agree with you. You know, I have a, a huge sense of pride walking into, uh, and, and I understand some of your beliefs, but Sundays we, as a family, we go to church, and uh, we leave sure. church, and we go into uh, and bra- go, to, go to have breakfast afterwards. It's our routine. But I've got my 9 millimeter by my side. I've got my cowboy hat, and I've got my beautiful wife and two kids, and I'm there to protect them, feed them, nurse them, uh, through what they not only hear and see, um, but, you know, in society. And, I, you know, I don't see enough men um, representing themselves with, with pride and affection for, you know, the act of life, a man and a woman and kids and, and, um, and, and you know, raising a family and, and doing things that, that have done, been done in the past. And we've lost so many of those small little details that maybe our grandparents uh, followed and, and their grandparents and so on. Um, but, yeah, I'm I'm concerned as well. You know, looking at the future. Yeah, I mean that that's so important. And and I what I really feel like, as we were saying, we've been saying kind of this entire podcast. It's it's our time, and you know, there's it's it's our responsibility to take that role and yeah. and to do that. And you you can't just let it. I think what what has happened over the past few decades is that men get frustrated and grumble and sit around and like play video games and polish their guns and have really withdrawn from society Yeah, in many ways. And, and uh, I think, I mean, what we have is the fruits of that, you know, it's like, well, if you want to let women and the worst human beings imaginable run your entire system for you, um, what did you think was going to happen? <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like, what did you think was going to happen? Like it's, it's men's job to come out and, you know, run for office and do the, do the thing. And it, maybe it shouldn't be the guy who wants, it has a power complex and wants to have power for the power's sake. It should be someone who just needs to do something because it's right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'll tell you real quick. And, and I'm going to start wrapping this up. Uh, respect for your time. I, you know, I've been volunteering for the GOP and working with some of these uh, senators and representatives in Montana and I, I just consider myself a normal guy. I've had a business career. I've had some success. And they're like, man, we need more people like you. And I'm thinking, what do you mean? Where have they, they been? <laughs> like, where are they at? Right? I'm just another normal guy willing to do something. And, it, and to your point, like, you know, we got to get involved. And the time is now. And we are those people. So uh, if you feel like you've got something to offer, get out and offer it. And start looking around for who needs help within, you know, within society. Um, 
Real quick, give us what we can expect, and I know the answer because I read them, but give us what we can expect from uh, Becoming a Barbarian, your other book, and A More Complete uh, Beast, which are both available right now. Uh, Becoming a Barbarian is is a lot about tribalism, and it's a a lot about the big system versus the little system. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm a huge fan of smaller systems versus big systems, Mm -hmm. and uh, just because they're more personal and people have skin in the game. And uh, it's becoming a barbarian is very much against globalism. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it talks about um, the like who people talk in the grand we this is the point that people like a lot from the book is, I guess, is that uh, people talk in this grand we like we need to do this and we need to do that. Well, who do you know that you're speaking for? Yeah. You know, and that's a big thing that I think people need to talk about, because if I always say the. If, if you start your solution with the words, if everyone would just, your solution's wrong. Because <laughs> that's not going to happen ever. It never has, never will. Uh, there is no if everyone would just do this. Uh, you need to uh, actively seek out the people who are willing to do that. Because not you, you're never going to get everyone on your page. That doesn't work that way. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, you need to think, people need to think a little bit differently and not just sit at home wishing that everyone would change. You know, so becoming a barbarian, I think, very much about tribalism. I know it. It it sounds like you, you should be lifting weights and slaying people, uh, but uh, you know, it's <laughs> barbarians are really barbarians are outsiders. Uh, you know, it comes from the you know the, the ancient Greeks used to call the uh, people who were didn't speak their language barbarians because they were like ba 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 ba. You know, like they 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 it was just outsiders yeah. who were different. And uh, so, it, one of the things is if if you have different beliefs than what are now uh, probably the very mainstream of society. Like if we're in a one party system now, <laughs> you know, uh, if you have different beliefs, you're a barbarian, bud. <laughs> you know, like you are the outsider. You're saying things that they're like, we don't say that, you know, like what you uncultured, disgusting person. Wait, don't you know the ways of the city? Yeah. You know, you know, uh, and so that's what a barbarian barbarian is. So, if you're pro masculinity at this point, you are a barbarian because you're outside of the of their norm. Yeah. Uh, so, and then a more complete beast um, it, is a lot about victimhood because it, it talks a lot about uh, Nietzsche, mm-hmm. and uh, so uh, it starts from uh, Nietzsche's concept of resentment, uh, which is basically what it sounds like: resentment, uh, jealousy, and uh, the psychology of that. And uh, I found a lot of men were in that mindset. Uh, men who were pro masculinity and all these things, they get in the mindset like, you know, the, the, they're oppressing us and they're against us. And like, uh, they, they take on their own kind of victimhood. It's like they, they believe in like heroic masculinity, but they take on their own kind of victimhood about it. And that's not a way forward. Uh, you know, it's like you can be mad at something and say, we're not, we're not going to take that and we're going to fight that or we're going to work to change it. But if, you know, just kind of, taking on this victim mentality and, and uh, is, is the wrong perspective. So yeah. that's more or less what uh, more complete beast is about. Yeah. Well, there, there are three great books that I would recommend to, to anybody to read. Um, so thank you for putting them out. Uh, last thing I saw on your Instagram, something that resonated with me and I dug a little bit deeper into it on my own, but uh, the line was, who are the men at your round table? And uh, mm. I, I just love that. Can you can you describe a little bit by what you mean? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, and that was actually we talked about Sean Whalen. That was from a conversation I had with Sean Whalen. Yeah, and uh, you know, he's talking about like yeah, you know, the different. There's your broad circle, and then there's a, a circle of like here are the people who I'm really interacting with in, in a reciprocal way that are kind of at my level and understand what I'm about and who are also successful because you, it's easy to create a round table of people who are not successful, yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know, and, uh, and then you have a kind of a, a feedback loop that's really negative. Uh, but, uh, you know, working to surround yourself with other men who are successful and who are moving in the same general direction, whereas actually, I think those were his words. Uh, it's like a bunch of nights working, walking in the same direction. Um, and, uh, I think that that's what we all need is, uh, you know, curating a group of peers mm-hmm. that um, are, you know, better than you at many things, 
you know, who you're going to gain things from. And, but as we talked about earlier, you know, it has to be reciprocal. You have to have something to bring to the table as well. Sure. And uh, so I think that the, you know, cultivating that is what one of the things that men really need to work on uh, because, you know, we need that positive feedback loop and we need guys around us who are working for the same things. I mean, it's, it's very, you know, it's a very American thing um, circa five years ago, I guess <laughs> that, you know, we're all supposed to have friends that are t- totally different and believe completely different things than us and whatever. And that is, that's helpful to an extent. Uh, it's good to understand that there are other perspectives in the world from your own, but I think that we're definitely at a point in society where you need to find guys who are, who want the same things, mm-hmm. you know, generally, I mean, I, I mean, you made a comment about it and I'd like my, my, the p- person I had in the picture on Instagram is a Mormon. I mean, he's, he's like one of my best buddies. Yeah. And he, and he's a, he, and uh, you know, it's like, we aren't on the same page on, the religion thing, but I guess that is very American. You know, like, it sure. doesn't matter. Right. It doesn't right. matter. We're, we're definitely on page freedom and fra- page masculinity together. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and so that's, those are the guys that I'm looking for. And I've, I've really felt honored that like, I've had a lot of guys uh, who are, uh, you know, very devout Christians and, and very, uh, you know, it's like Ryan Mickler and, and who, who have reached out to me and kept me in the loop on a lot of things um, because, they understand there's a big fight that's happening. It's the fight for masculinity and excellence and order and freedom. Yes. And we care about those things. And the other stuff is details. Yeah. Well, the you other know? things so, fall under the freedom portion, right? If you have the freedom, those details exactly. go be and do what you want to do. Exactly. Exactly. All the, all the good men I know in the world really, who I really admire uh, are men who don't really want to control other people. Mm-hmm. Uh, they don't really have a, overwhelming desire to control other guys they're like hey you do whatever you want just don't make me do what you want right yeah and and most of the guys i know are uh, who are worth something are like that and and i think that that's that's a majority of guys if we could just kind of get them together and on the same you know like to realize they're on the same page and uh, like most uh, you know the military guys and all the like the the high level dudes and whatever who i know they just they just want to be left alone to do their own thing and they want to leave you alone to do your own thing. And that's, we, we can agree on that. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think we're probably our own worst enemies because we want to be that way. But yet right now in society is a time where we need to step out of doing our own thing and really pull together and help the big thing. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Hey, uh, before I let you go, you've got a symbol behind you. And by the way, you've got a beautiful setup I've, on your Zoom, <laughs> right? You're, clearly, you're an artist. Uh, your symbol behind you, I've seen it in a lot of your work. Can you describe what that is and, and what that means? Uh, yeah, it's based on a, uh, an ancient solar symbol found in, in Zurich that's uh, related to actually the Celts, probably. Mm-hmm. Um, but solar, sim- so- solar symbols generally are very representative, I, I think, of this, you know, God in the sky, you know, like in all these religions and that's something I write about in my new book, but you know, all these religions have this father in the sky and he's over what he's overlooking everything and, and, uh, and so forth. And so to me, I put the eye in like, it's a, it, it was, it was just the uh, sun. And then I put the eye in the sun and that's very mythologically consistent mm-hmm. with uh, how a lot of religions and so forth have evolved. Yeah. And so that's uh, kind of a symbol that I've made my own and, uh, uh, you know, it's kind of solar eye and yeah. it has to do with my slogan, stay solar and, and so forth. And, you know, I, I explain it more on my website. There's a little thing about it, but uh, it, it's definitely, it's something I made up for the, the book, a more complete beast. And then I realized that's the symbol. It's yeah. the one. So, yeah. uh, you know, that's, that's kind of what I've been using. And so it's kind of caught on with a lot of people and they're using it too. So I love it's it. Good. I love it. So yeah. where can people find you? I know where I got my books at one of those big box online stores, but where, where would you prefer people buy your books and, and find out more about what you're doing? Yeah. I mean, my stuff's on Amazon. I mean, that's where most people buy it. Yep. That's, that's uh, so you can buy my books on Amazon. Uh, I have audiobooks uh, through audible and, uh, uh, you can find out more about my stuff. My j- website is jackdashdonovan.com. And uh, I'm on Instagram at, uh, uh, at start the world. And uh, on there right now I'm promoting uh, and, and through my website as well, you can sign up for my mailing list. And uh, I haven't really used my mailing list much in the past uh, because, you know, I didn't want to flood people's inbox with stuff, 
But the way things are going in the world, I don't need to put a press release on my website every time I write something. And so this year, uh, I'm going to make an effort to actually 